So, um, for for everyone who doesn't know, this is Gab. Gab, introduce yourself. Ah, <laughs> uh, what? Hi. <laughs> this is Gab. Gab and I do a podcast called The Secret Treehouse sometimes, but in our downtime, we're both college students, um, and when Gab has the time to hang out with me, sometimes she and our podcast cover artist, Stess, um, comes along with me to do story quests on a game called Genshin Impact. I usually don't advertise that I play Genshin Impact or know more about Genshin Impact than I should, but um, in this one instance, Gab asked me if we could do a video together um, where she guesses what the deal is per Genshin character that I provide her. Um, And instead of just showing her a roster full of characters and making her guess what their vibe is, I made a game show. Welcome to Gab Guesses Genshin. The rules of this game are pretty simple. It seems complicated because uh, I made this like in the middle of the night, three nights in a row. So like, grain of salt. So the way Gab Guesses Genshin works is there are four categories and in those four categories, Gab has to get eight correct answers. That is two correct answers per character. If she instead gets two incorrect answers per character, she gets to redeem a redemption question. A redemption question, if answered correctly, will nullify all of the incorrect answers from before. So only the correct answers from that category will be counted. If Gab redeems eight questions, she has to do a nullifier round or else she'll lose lose. It's the ultimate loss. Here's the prize. If Gab gets more correct answers than incorrect ones, she gets to make me read a fanfic of her choice out loud, record it, like record it into like a podfic and upload it on my YouTube channel. If she gets more wrong answers than correct ones, I will get to make her draw a Genshin ship of my choice. I don't like choosing, so I spun a wheel. Here's here's the one that Gab is supposed to draw. And of course, if she obtains the ultimate loss, the punishment for that is that Gab has to draw my Genshin lore of choice and she has to use that image as her profile picture for an entire month. So yeah, that's Gab Guesses Genshin. Welcome to the game show. Currently, there are seven in-game elements. Cur- oh my I'm God, saying there are seven. I need to take notes. <laughs> no, I I have I have a reference. Per element, there is a corresponding god and a co- corresponding nation, all that stuff. Oh, so it's it's like the Boons in Hades. Yeah, basically. <laughs> what Pyro- is the purple one? Um, it's Electro. Pyro, that's where Klee is. Yes, Pyro, Pyro, Klee. <laughs> Pyromania. <laughs> Makes sense. For Pyro, it's the Archon of War or something, but like the idea between Pyro characters is always like whether or not the reason that they're fighting for something is reasonable or not. You know how like okay. Athena and Ares are like both technically war gods, but yep. they don't hold the same thing? That's kind of the same thing. All of the Pyro characters are technically fighting for something. Hydro characters, it's. It's kind of poetic, mostly because they're all, like, kind of pretentious characters. Okay. (laughs) They're all rich, okay? So, (laughs) all all Hydro characters are rich. Um, The idea is, since it's water, they're always supposed to be, like, taking some sort of shape within a container. Fontaine and, like, the, the Archon of Hydro basically is, like, they basically have, like, a box they have to fit into. But they will find creative ways to commit to what they think is just within that box. Animo is um, supposed to be the element. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, Animo is supposed to be the element of freedom, but there is like some certain constraints to freedom. Is um, if you have too much freedom, you're directionless, basically. And if you have ah, not freedom enough- Freedom is a length of rope. God wants you to hang yourself with it. Good God. <laughs> Thanks, Gav. <laughs> Very lighthearted for a game show. <laughs> so the idea behind Animo basically, like all of the Animo characters will experience a certain sense of loss 
um, at some point. Oh. And the idea is after they've experienced that loss, will they be... Will they continue to be directionless or will they use that freedom to do something that they want? Electro is basically eternity versus transience. I've explained this to you at some point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so moments that last forever is a commonality between all Electro characters. Um, Dendro is the most recent element that has been implemented in the game. The thing with Dendro is confusing. It's like creativity within rationality. I'll tell you the story of how Tignati got his vision <laughs> at some point. Wait, didn't he eat a mushroom? No, no. <laughs> No, that was just his character trailer. That was actually hilarious. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he was just eating mushrooms yeah. for fun. Yeah, it's it's for it's for science, all right. <laughs> Cre creativity in the pursuit of knowledge, or something like that. Mushroom poisoning. Of course. <laughs> he he just got high. Don't know. <laughs> he could have died, it, but he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Look on the right side, Gap. So Cryo is a little complicated because the the god of um, Cryo is kind of... Her element is supposed to represent love. Okay. So the way I interpret it, when you feel like an overwhelming sense of yearning. Oh, oh. Yeah, an overwhelming sense of yearning for something. It doesn't matter if you have achieved what it is at the end of that yearning, but like the presence of that overwhelming yearning is the reason why you got your vision in the first place. Um, oh. Man, Kaya. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not gonna be... I'm not gonna cry. Okay. Geo is a little weird. They're the, la like, they're the land of contracts. It's kind of... <laughs> it's kind of capitalistic. Uh -huh. Zhongli is known oh, as no. the CEO of Geo. But... Um, their ideal is basically pride in excellence, kind of. They're very proud oh, people. Oh, they're perfectionists? Well, no. It's not that they're perfectionists, per se. It's that they, they're they really good at what they know how to do, and they're so good at it that they're, like, to the point of arrogance, almost. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So it's that. So this will be important, so I will have a guide up. There it is. That's I took the, notes. There it is. <laughs> That's that's my guide. Yeah. Have you taken the picture? Yes, I have taken the picture. Okay, good. You've got the picture. The picture is yours. I've got it. <laughs> so, our first character, technically first character, just the one, um, are the Travelers. Mm -hmm. So, the Travelers are not from this world. I've told you this. 500 years before the game starts, after waking up the Traveler, mm -hmm. your character... The traveler from a deep sleep both of these twins attempt to leave this world only to be barred from exit there's the whole thing about it <laughs> um the ensuing struggle to oh, escape no. separates them and 500 years later they are not mortal <laughs> 500 years later the traveler your character wakes up again and st starts scouring the nation to ask about where your twin is basically so our travelers names are ether and lumine they don't have a specific element. You can change your element within the game, um, but they don't have a specific element. They are mm -hmm. not from here. There they are. I feel like one of them is like from a cold region and one of them is from like a sandy region. <laughs> They're technically star people. What? That's the running theory, oh. at least. Um, this motif will come up a lot in some characters. This is important. I'll point that out later again. So these are like the main characters in the game. Yes, you can choose only one of them. <laughs> Why can't you choose both? Um, because the story hinges on you trying to find the other. Does the sto does does the story change based on like which character you choose? Mm, not really. That's the thing with the game is that um, they give you like the di dialogue choices, but they don't really progress or give you any other branching options. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, that's what's different about like that versus like cyberpunk because if you choose like a certain character in c cyberpunk your choices are locked to like a certain mm. like, path and it's different if you choose a different character okay are in-game characters able to call both of them by their names in the game no because i don't remember i i remember you can't wait like are we able to call them by their name you yeah mean, these or... names Yes. I don't 
think so, because I just hear traveler. Good, because that is the correct answer. No. Yes! <laughs> you cannot. No, because I've, on I've only heard you refer to them, but I don't think I've heard the names mm -mm. other than you referring to them. Yes. yes! Exactly, yes. Good job. I told you these, these questions are easy. <laughs> you can only call one of the twins by their real name in the game, by the way. Uh, whichever traveler you choose. For so, for example, just for brief example here, um, if you chose Ether, um, mm -hmm. you will be called by, uh, you will be able to call their respective t twin by their name, Lumine, mm -hmm. um, and no one will ever address you as Ether or Lumine in the game. Not even Paimon will call you Ether or Lumine. Yeah, yeah, that's what I noticed. That's why I was like, this Paimon, this Paimon. And the tiny little voice just goes, Hey, Traveler! Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Which twin is taller? These are not up to scale, by the way. <laughs> Which twin is taller? Just vibe-wise, looking at both of I them. I feel like Ether. That's correct, yes. <laughs> Ether is the taller twin. So you can now move on to the next category. Yay! Thank God. There are two other questions I'll show you off, off camera. It'll be fun. <laughs> So our next character is the man, the myth, the legend, Kaya Alvarez. <laughs> <laughs> Pirate, Pirate guy. guy. <laughs> so Kaya Alvarez, the cavalry captain of the Knights of Avonius, without a horse, by the way, um, previously adopted son mm -hmm. of the richest family in Munstad. Um, the Ragnavinders. Everything changed when the Fatui corrupted a dragon. I, honestly, out of all the ones, <laughs> honestly, out of all the characters I've seen you play, Kaya is my favorite. Of Just course. Vibes alone. You and Stess. What, what do you mean, of course? <laughs> you and Stess Why? both actually. When Why? I have Kaya out, like both of you, like just try and like <laughs> say his voice lines for some reason. He says, "Cool, cool it." Time. Like five seconds later, Gab goes, "Cool, cool it." <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> All right. Um, everything changed when the Fatui corrupted a dragon. <laughs> that a dragon is involved in his backstory, Gab. This is important. Okay. Wow. The Fatui corrupted a dragon that ultimately killed his adoptive dad, Creepus. Oh no! And it launched a divide between him and his brother Diluc. There's a lot in that backstory that I can't tell you right now. But you can you can ask questions. Um, is he older? Um, is he the older brother or is Diluc the older brother? Diluc is. <laughs> this mm. is the most bullshit question. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I write this here? Alright. In the game, Kaya tells the story of how he got his eye patch. This little, this little thing here, hidden by his hair anyway. A tale about a pirate out at sea who has slain eight-headed hydras and screeching banshees. His eye patch was inherited by from his grandfather he says <laughs> is that true i don't think so <laughs> good because it isn't it was a lie How? he told paimon <laughs> how did he come up his eye patch um is it do they tell you at the moment it is hiding something under there. Okay. <laughs> I can't I can't answer that until you you either get okay. this next one correct or incorrect. So you know what? When I had green hair, people were telling me to cosplay Kai and I was like, I don't know who that is. It's him. <laughs> it's Pirate Guy! It's Pirate Guy. Alright. Next question. Look at him very carefully, Gap. Just Okay. Does Kaya have the title of Top candidate for grandson in law. Yes. <laughs> if you were a grandparent, would you consider this man? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. The elderly of Munstadt love the living daylights out of this man. Look at, they, look, at, look at him. Look they at want him. to feed him so many food. SJ, look at him. He's just, he's kind of a mess. You just want to like... Yes. Give him food. <laughs> give him food. <laughs> the Asian. The Asian in you just activated. <laughs> Please, someone feed this man. Alright. 
So just to answer your earlier question, his eye patch is hiding a scar that was given to him by Diluc oh. while they were fighting. Oh shit! Yeah. Um. That was the oh, same. Fuck. Yeah. That was the same night he got his vision. By the way. Oh my god. Oh, so considering oh, what I fuck. told you about the <laughs> the cryo the vision Rathros. holders. Um. Yeah. Our next character doesn't have a constellation. Um. His name is Dainsliff. Or Dane. D Dane's Dane. <laughs> so Dane is from a kingdom long dead. Dane is <laughs> okay. Why does he look like your? This is the guy who looks like Yuri from like Russian <laughs> Yuri. Thank you. All right. So he's from a kingdom long dead and is cursed to forever wander to Vat. He is one of the only people in Tavat who has ever admitted to interacting with the Traveler's twin out loud. <laughs> Oh. And he is often known to hunt down monsters of the Abyss and takes commissions specifically about the Abyss Order. There are lord reasons for that that we shall not be getting into. So, do you have any other questions? He kind of looks like an. <laughs> he kind of looks like an evil Halpen dragon. <laughs> like Halpen dragon if he was goth. That is like, so goth rude. Fuck. Dane is actually just like some emo guy. He's just some emo guy that the traveler picked up off the side of the road. It's actually is so is that sad. not Halpen Dragon? <laughs> I like his outfit though. This is a cool yeah. outfit. Drip outfit, so true. So, our first question is: His name, Dainsliff, is based in Norse myth, as all things Conrian are for some reason. Um, mm -hmm. Dainsliff is a sword, not the the Norse myth thing. It's it's a sword that, when drawn, cannot be sheathed again until it has drawn life kind of kind of metal not gonna lie <laughs> part of his name just just this first part dane is also drawn from one of the four stags of yggdrasil big tree mm -hmm. um if one of his status statuses currently in the game is bowkeeper just something about trees what used to be the other one just based on what he looks like his other title by the way is called um, not this is not the answer, but the other title is Twilight Sword, <laughs> which is cute. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Bo. He's from a kingdom. Yeah, was he a knight? There you go. Yes, to be exact, he was knight captain. He was the oh, head dang. of the royal guard for the Eclipse Dynasty, which is now long dead. Oh, dead. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> is Dainsliff? The first Kanyan character to be introduced in the game. Mm, yes. Are, Are you sure, sure about, about that? Because <laughs> isn't he like... Oh wait, isn't your sibling? No, technically oh. the, um, the the travelers aren't from here. So see these four, four pointed things here? These stars? Mm -hmm. Yeah. These show up in two other characters. One is, of course, oh, shit. these two. Yeah, but yeah. These are Connery and Garbs, technically. The other is this man, right Pirate here. Guy. Yeah. So um. So no. No, Dane is not actually the first character who is Connery. That would be Kaya. Kaya came from Connery. Pirate guy. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yes, you mentioned that. He is. Actually, the first explicitly Conrian character, though he actually like okay. talks about talks. That's about tricky. It. Okay, that's tricky. <laughs> Kaya is um kind of a weirdo. Yeah, he's kind of a weirdo, but he doesn't talk about Conrian openly. He, you have to like dig through his files for it. Our next character, you've seen her, me play f with her for like a while now. Our next main character here is the lead investigator of the Monstad chapter of the Adventurers Guild. She has a familiar name to Oz, short for Oswaldo von Hafnerweins. I think that's how it's supposed to be said. I don't know. Short for, yeah, again, it's short for Oz. Um, she can see through his eyes, which is really cool. Fischl is the heir of the Imanachthrax throne or something like that. She has, yeah, our, our weird little Chunibyo, Fischl and Oz. Which, which one? Oz is the 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 bird. Yes, this little guy. Yes, I don't think he's little. Oh, this is, this is a large bird. Is she hiding anything under her eye patch? She has she her. Have an she eye patch? This one right here. Mm, I don't think so. 
Good guess. Sheesh. No, um, that is a real functioning eye under that eye. <laughs> yeah, no, I think... L listen, I, f I feel like she commits to her aesthetic. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at her and like, I'm like, it should be cool to run around in like this lingerie-esque outfit. She's committing <laughs> to the bit. Committing to the bit. That's, that's Fischl <laughs> in a nutshell. Is Fischl real? The woman was too stunned to speak. Is Fischl real? Is Fischl real? That is a good- it's, it's a question. It's not philosophical. Is Fischl real? Uh, I think Oz is real. And Fischl might be a manifestation of Oz. I don't know. <laughs> is that your final answer? Yeah, sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> But you did answer the next question correctly, which means that you are moving fast. <laughs> Would you want to redeem a, uh, a question here? <laughs> also, um, Fischl is a fictional character from a book called Flowers for Princess Fischl. Um, Fischl the person. Her real name is Amy. She's an avid what? LARPer. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah, so Oz is real. Oz is actually a figment of her imagin uh, imagination that came to life. Oh, quite nice. literally. <laughs> um, he came about during her birthday, actually, because no one came oh. to her birthday party. <laughs> no, that's so sad. Yeah, she was Wait, 14. It's like... It's like it's like Adam and the Hellhound. <laughs> this might sound like a trick question, but since it's a redemption question, it might sound like it. What weapon does she wield? A scythe? There are five weapons available in this game. A sword, a bigger sword, uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, no, SJ, sorry. Did you just call a broadsword a bigger sword? Yes, there is a bigger sword. It's called a claymore in the game. Um, a bow and a catalyst, which is just like mage stuff. I feel like a catalyst. That is incorrect. Oh no! She wields a bow. If you <laughs> I like how my notes say if Gab hadn't gotten this right, I would have laughed since I play Fischl religiously. Oh right! Oh right. Well. <laughs> no, yes, now I'm remembering. It's the one with the purple the purple thingies when she shoots. Yes. An astrologer from Fontaine, technically. Mona has the ability to divine certain pasts, presents, and futures. She's slightly clairvoyant. After a fatal mistake involving Klee's mom, a diary, and Klee oh, no. herself, Mona has chosen to stay in Munstadt for the time being. <laughs> that is Mona oh, Magistus. Oh, witch girl. Yes. <laughs> so, what weapon does she wield? A ca I feel like a catalyst. Good guess. She uh, she is a catalyst healer. Is Mona a witch? I don't think so. Good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's training to be an astrologist. I I said this. She's an astrologer. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, you can be a witch in this game, by the way. An anathema device would be very disappointed <laughs> in me. <laughs> um, before we get to the halftime, so we can like go and pee, we have. <laughs> <laughs> Known to few as the animal archon of freedom and song, Barbados. Venti is a bard with a love for anything oh, alcoholic uh, <laughs> or oh, apple flavored. Yes. He's allergic to cats and sleeps in trees. Cats? And yes, cats. He's allergic to cats, sleeps in trees, and is friends with a dragon. He is also more than 2,600 years old. Look at this man. <laughs> Does he seem like 20? No, but this is the guy who like talks about murder. No, that would be child, I think. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. If Venti would talk about murder, I'd, I'd be like, I'd just make him jump off a cliff. Is Venti's vision real? Right over here. No. Yep, it is a total fake. <laughs> he doesn't need one. He is a spirit made entirely out of wind. <laughs> Yeah, there. I was about to say, isn't he like a spirit? I remember that. You told told me about that. Your your information retention, I'm kind of impressed. <laughs> this is shocking news. Shocking. I'm shocked. This is like when me and my mom played like friends themed trivial pursuit and I beat her at one game and I was oh like Oh my god. What? What? His vision, by the way, this little fake little thing here can turn into a liar. He calls it their frulling. 
which means oh my God. spring, I think, which is really cute. Take a good look at Benty right now. Like, look into his soulless little eyes. His beady, <laughs> beady stare. Do people believe him when he tells them he's a god? No. <laughs> Very easy question right there. Yeah, he tried to do that inside a church built in his name and legacy and was turned away. Uh -oh. So, uh... Oh my god. <laughs> people Just will like not believe Cassiel believe. being god. <laughs> Truly really living up to your icon right now, just like yeah, Castiel. Yeah. <laughs> My God. No, you know I, you know I have to bring it up. I have to bring it up at least once per thing. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't feel complete, SJ. So we have some context clues before we go into Liyue because we've been doing all, we've done all of Munstadt by now. The Adepti, if you don't know what they are, I guess. Um, it's a very niche concept that I only knew, like I only learned about in this game and then like found out that it's actually just a, a whole thing in Chinese Chinese pop culture, I guess. They are illuminated beasts or humans who have achieved immortality. Oh yes, I, I have heard of these, yes. but I didn't know that was the name. So in the game, these characters are given their status of Adeptus by the Geo Archon. Uh, they have special abilities uh, surpassing most vision bearers, are a little out of touch, I'm not gonna lie, and in game, are tasked to pr um, protect Liyue under contract with Morax, the Geo Archon. Contractual <laughs> sila Okay, so during an era in the game lore called the Archon War, there was a whole war about it. As as I told you earlier, there are only seven Archons within this game. Um, mm -hmm. They all rule over their own specific countries. But um, there are a lot of gods in this game. So there used to be way more gods than there are now. Um, mm -hmm. Then came the Archon War, where all of them kind of went through like a battle royale thing and just oh, duked geez. it out with each other. Um, of the original victors, I think the only ones who are still alive are Venti and Zhongli. <laughs> so, Sorry, yeah. I like how you're, you're just dropping the fact that Venti mm -hmm. survived yes. the Battle Royale. Yes, Dong. he did. A uh, little fun fact, he kind of um, terraformed Munchtat the moment he became an Archon. <laughs> Hell? So so wait, the last two gods are like the capitalist dude and the dude who gets Yes. Who really likes alcohol? Yep. <laughs> They're the last two of the original victors of the Archon War. During the Archon War, gods were actively killing each other and gods, as I've shown you in one of our playthroughs, cannot die unnaturally without considerable drawbacks to the environment or the creatures living within the, that environment. The, the snake thing. Yeah, the giant snake in Inazuma. The giant snake. <laughs> Morax ta tasked a portion of the Adepti. He tasked them basically to make sure that the drawbacks can't harm human civilians within Liyue. And um, these specific Adepti are called Yaksha. Oh no! Yep. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's, what... that's one no. of them. Of course, these drawbacks also affect Adepti. And also gods. Oh, no, wait! Yes. Oh, so many of no. the Yaksha are dead because they have gone mad or killed each other no. or died of grief. Or That's so upsetting! I know, I know. There was a huge thing about it. There's also the fact that there is a very real and spiritual effect within staying with those areas of like trying oh, to clear them trying to purify them. Um, I brought the Yaksha up because our upcoming little guy is um Xiao. Oh, yeah. This is the yes, this guy. Yes. Xiao is a dutiful Yaksha who works towards keeping the US safe from the effects of dead gods posthumous wrath. He's been the only one since 500 years ago. The cutscene I showed you, that was uh one of the last ones actually. Um, no. Yeah. That's so so, Xiao is a mighty warrior with the deepest, and I say this with the utmost just emphasis, the, the deepest, deepest soft side known to man. Oh. <laughs> Liyue's oh. resident emo. Call his name. Adeptus Xiao. <laughs> I've seen fan art of Xiao as uh, Xiao Longbao. <laughs> That is so rude. Saying that, knowing the amount of disrespect, our first question for Xiao is... Is is he the shortest male character in the game so far? Yes. I feel like he's a short king. He didn't drink enough character. <laughs> I prefer the term manlet. Yes, he is. He is the shorter, shortest 
man in the game. Oh. He is shorter than even the most youngest male characters in this game, by the way. By virtue of like character, the youngest would be Bennett, and Bennett is still like considerably taller than him. Oh my god. So yeah, he's just a little guy. He's a little, a little dude. Considering that Adepti, like most Adepti, aren't human, some of them can like kind of assume a human form. What is mm -hmm. Xiao's original form? I feel like a wolf or a dog. <laughs> Are you saying that because you like wolves or dogs? <laughs> no, I feel like there's something about like the way his hair is drawn that reminds me mm. of wolf fur. That's incorrect. <gasps> Xiao is a bird. Is he a cat? Oh, I did not yeah. get that. He's a golden punk, a gigantic bird from Chinese myth that transformed oh. from an equally gigantic fish. It's symbolic. Trust me. <laughs> Anyway, also look at his fucking constellation. <laughs> so knowing what you know about Xiao now, does he eat snow? Well, if he's a bird, maybe, yes. He does, he does, he does. Why does he eat snow? <sighs> okay, this is gonna get, get a little depressing, but um... You know when I said that whole that whole thing about him being a golden punk is like symbolic? That's sort of literal, like when he first met Zhongli or like Morax, during a time of the Ark Kong War, he was a completely different person in that he used to be kind of a demon. Um, he used oh to eat people's gracious. dreams. Eat yeah. people's dreams? Yes, he used to eat people's dreams. Not even the, the bad ones, he ate like the good ones. <laughs> he, likes oh, no. eating, he used to like eating dreams. And he was working under a different master back then who was kind of a slave driver, I'm not gonna lie. And mm -hmm. then Zhongli set him free and gave him a new name, Xiao. Oh. So during that time under That's his nice. weird master, um, he wasn't getting fed properly. No! Yeah. <laughs> and oh, one of the no. only things he used to eat was snow. No, that's... Dude, yeah. That is so sad. Yeah, because, um, apart from dreams, like, he doesn't really like human food. So do you want to null that incorrect answer you got? I'll try it, I'll try it. Come Okay, knowing what you know about Xiao now, is he a picky eater? Mm, no. Yes, he is. Oh, yeah. okay. So, so he, it's snow or nothing? Um, it's snow or two other things, actually. Um, there is um, there's an event minigame where you get to feed characters. I think I've shown you like some voice lines. Ew. Oh, <clears throat> I'm just a slow eater. Xiao only eats two things that will not give you that ew answer. Almond tofu. <laughs> Or grilled tiger fish. Ama Tofu, he has said that he likes it because of the texture. It reminds him I of like... when he used to eat dreams. Oh. Yeah, it's the same <laughs> texture of a dream. So it makes him a little nostalgic. He's kind of... I did tell you he was the emo guy of Liyue. He's, he's a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, he's a little... He's a weird little he's, guy. He's a bit weird, but I respect that. <laughs> he's a weird little guy. He's a... He's friends with Benty. You know what? I can't blame him. He's been alive for thousands of years. It's fine. <laughs> He's not even guy. the oldest. He's just kind of weird like that. The other thing he <laughs> eats is grilled tiger fish, which is um, part of his story quest is involved with another Yaksha who already passed, but you got to interact with him named Pervasis. And Pervasis used to really like when humans offered up grilled tiger fish for him. So, mm -hmm. from time to time, just to kind of eulogize his friend, he would eat grilled tiger fish. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, he's kind God. of a picky eater. It's almond tofu, grilled tiger fish, or nothing. <laughs> or snow. Or snow, yes. <laughs> this is a voice line from Xiao if you like, go to Dragon Spine, which is like the only snow mountain in this game so far. He will just go, Once the snow is thick enough, we can eat it. <laughs> not <my> king. <laughs> I have food. Okay, you don't have to go through that. You know, Good you Lord. know, you would, you would go in the same for a snow cone. <laughs> I love this short. By the way. Oh my God, Cleve! Master Jean is a bitch. 